Hello, my brothers and sisters. Hello. I greet you. I greet you. I greet you with love and light. My name is Lucas Mack, and welcome to the Golden Rule Revolution podcast, where inspiration is found from treating people like people and nothing less. Today, I have a yogi on, but not just a yogi. I have a brother of mine on the podcast, the creator of the Great Awakening Map. If you have not seen this, I encourage you to take a look. I encourage you to start asking questions of the very existence and reality, that which you find yourself in. The rhetoric, the media, the frequencies, the intensity, the vitriol, the violence, the destruction, and what else is there to be seen? The beauty, the cadence of nature, the birds, the grass, the sun, the air, light, and darkness. Today, I get to bring, uh, he goes by Champ, but his account is the 5D Awakening Consciousness on Instagram, and you will be, um, <laughs> you will be blessed. You will be blessed. You will be blessed when you, when you go to his account, 5D underscore awakening consciousness, or if you just type in Ascension Knowledge, you should be able to find that as well. But welcome to this episode and welcome to the Great Awakening. Um, so walk me through your, where, first of all, where were you born? Where'd you grow up? Oh, I want to ask you so many questions too. I was born in Manhattan, New York. Wow. But I never lived in New York, so I can't really call myself a New Yorker other than I was born in Manhattan. Uh, my family moved to California for my entire life. Wow. So I was born and raised, I, I, was, I was raised all my life in Southern California. And when did you first acknowledge or when were you first aware of that spiritual spark? That didn't come till a lot, a lot later. Mm. Um, I went to UC Irvine. And when I graduated UC Irvine, it was around 2007. So I would say maybe 2009 is when I really had my rabbit hole red pill. And then there was no turning back from there. And what was the catalyst for that? What, what, what bit of information did you <laughs> stumble across or were you presented with that woke you up? Okay, this is one of my favorite stories. And every time I tell it, there's like new details that I remember. But um, awesome. To say around 2008, 2009-ish, I was living at home as a freelance graphic designer. And when you're a freelance designer, you have so many hours during the day to, to do what you need to, to, to explore YouTube, etc. And I was accidentally browsing YouTube and I came across a video. It was like a black and white really low res video and it was something to do with the hexagon on top of Saturn. And on the top of Saturn, there's a, on the North pole of Saturn, there's a cloud pattern. And this cloud pattern is in the shape of a hexagon. And this hexagon storm is so large, you could fit 10 earths within the diameter of this thing. And my whole life, I have been a Trekkie and a Star Wars fan. I've been obsessed with space, astronomy. So here I was, out of college. You know, you think you've learned everything, but then you come across this bizarre anomaly that is just totally unlike anything you've ever studied in mainstream education. And I was so puzzled, like, how did I go through all of these years of obsession with space and physics and, and you name it, but I've never seen this anomaly. And how are these cloud patterns making these perfectly hexagonal angles? Right. So I studied the researcher who made the video. His name is Richard Hoagland. And he was saying how inside Saturn, there's a hyperdimensional 
sacred geometry involved in making these cloud patterns. Mm. And if you extrapolate the sacred geometry, you can create free energy and anti-gravity and all these amazing things that I never learned before. And this was my red pill into the, the deep, deep, deep rabbit hole. <laughs> and it is, and it goes as deep as anyone. Um, yeah, um, it just goes on. Your, um, so I, first of all, I just, I love, I love talking about this stuff. And not for talking about its sake, but understanding that there is so much happening in the now moment, in our reality, in the reality of the greater collective. And what I was messaging you the other day is waking up to this is just a game. And exactly. it's a game that we get to play or it's a game that we cho- get to choose not to play or it's a game we get to change the rules or it's a game, you know, it, this is an incredible um, reality. And all the, the Great Awakening map, ever since I was a kid, ever since I, was, I grew up in a severely traumatic home and had – terrible things happened to me. And ever since I was four, I can remember specifically four, four years old where I lived. And I had this sense that I was, and it just recurred over and over, but the sense that I was supposed to start this or not start, but be part of or lead or be speaking on behalf of this awakening. I, I used to call it in high school, but I thought I called it the third great awakening because I called the, the first great awakening what took place in the from the Reformation all the way to about 1776, that first great awakening that that sparked the great American founders and philosophy of Benjamin Franklin saying, um, instead of cursing the darkness, light a candle and this great philosophical rhetoric that came into the, to the consciousness of the planet. But then I, I took the second great awakening as um, more of the Christian path where the abolitionists, the, the do unto others as you would have them do unto you and Charles Finney, so I was looking at this as being the third great awakening, but really I've studied more and more. This is the <laughs> great awakening. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like <laughs> the others were great movements um, and certainly had their part, but I think only as foundational pieces for this, this awakening. So I share all that to say, I, when I saw your map, first of all, I've, I've, studied most of not all but most of and i had to understand it was like what it was almost like ah (laughs) and everything in alignment on one beautifully designed piece of art that i could see and track and um one thing that i i i grew up in a christian from a christian perspective and one of the things i realized very early on is that if Satan, and this is just in the context of what I grew up in, not that I'm saying that this is reality now, but if Satan is pride, if he is the epitome of ego and, and self-serving pride and arrogance and has no shame, then I looked at movies that came out as basically front page headlines. And I've always had that awareness of like, oh, when Hollywood comes out with something, it's, it's a declaration and they're not hiding what they're doing. In fact, now that I read the satanic Bible or read all these other works from that perspective, they have to show, or they would consider themselves hypocritical, but society does not process. You know, we operate like we can't hear the pitch of a dog that dogs can hear a dog whistle and we can't see the light in other, you know, frequencies. We can only see what we see. And then we say, well, what we can't hear and see does not exist when the easiest example is man's best friend. Here's a pitch that we cannot. So a society just kind of sleeps through this very narrow frequency while people that are willing and able to operate in the fullness of what they can operate in do that. So I'm just sharing. Anyway, I just, I love, I'm so glad we're talking. I think this is so important to, 
there's more. I think that's like the tagline. It should be, there's more. <laughs> I also grew up uh, for 12 years from kindergarten through high school. I went to a private Christian school, high school. Mm -hmm. So you can drop all the Christian references. I'll understand okay, everything. You got it. Say. Okay. Okay. And I've also seen, you know, the religious world from that aspect because I grew up in Loma Linda. And it's a very Seventh-day Adventist Christian community. So I saw the hardcore stuff, you know, yes. the high, the lows, you name it. I saw it all. Yeah. And um, I really like what you said about the narrow bandwidth um, that, that we're seeing of reality. And that's mainly because the elites have been able to use media and Hollywood to sort of trick us into believing that reality is only this narrow bandwidth right. of fear and terror and violence and, and terrorism and whatever other ism you want to throw at it. So uh, when you travel the world, you see the truth that 99% of this world is just full of peace and love yes. and everybody just wants to have a good time. Yes. But if you turn on the TV, you get like this bizarre alternate reality parallel universe where it's just like bombs and guns and violence and foul language. Right. And you have to realize this, the Americans have been tricked. Our country is in the state of chaos it's in because of the media, the television. Yes. It's really that simple. It's not just television, it's magazines. It's the, the tabloids in the checkout, checkout line. Yeah. Um, it, it's advertisements. TV commercials, all of that stuff. It's, it's programming people to believe that reality should be this way right. when it isn't. I mean, this is very obvious, but when you live in this saturated media environment that America is, it's hard to go even one day without seeing any words or advertisements or, or even like a rap song with lyrics right. that stays in your mind all day. And then 10 years later, you'll still hear that same lyric. Like, for instance, um, living in Thailand now, I would go to like a coffee shop in the middle of the country. And they barely have electricity, but they have rap music playing in the background. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's like lyrics about like heartbreak and like just negative stuff, you know? Right. Materialistic right. stuff. And they don't know what, it, what the lyrics are, but for me, it's like, bugging me and i'm trying to escape america to get away from this whole thing but then i'm here like thousands of miles away on the other side of the world and i'm listening to the same type of like negative rap, rap lyrics mm. it's just bizarre you know it's like this mind programming frequency it's like hanging out in like the new sphere of the world and and it's just like continuous you can't get away from it you have to know how to recognize it and not let it get to you right i don't think I don't think a lot of people try to defend themselves from media and music, but you really do have to because uh, especially song lyrics, they're usually about depressing subjects. If you think about it. Right. Right. It's, oh, it's always something really like low vibe. It's interesting because um, I worked in, in media at a, for the first part of my professional career as a, um, I was an audience coordinator, which means for a live local talk show that was on the air for 30 years in Seattle, which means I sat and I was taught because this is the way all studio audiences work in any TV show with a live audience around the world is I placed people in the audience where I knew the camera would cut away because we had a certain demographic we wanted them to look like. So I would line front first two rows and then up and around the camera, the third camera three in the middle. And then we were basically creating this reality. And then I got them all to warm up and I'd raise my hand like this if, to let them know, get ready to clap. And then I go like this and it was a clap like this. If I went two hands, everyone's going crazy. And it was fun, but I'm basically creating the feel that I want someone at home to feel like. And then from that position, I, I was a TV reporter and journalist. So I was in small markets in, in Eastern Washington and then went down to San Antonio. And when I was down in San Antonio, Texas, I was a feature reporter. So I did all the fun, inspiring, uplifting stories. I had two um, segments. I had the night shift um, 
on the Fox affiliate, which was supposed to be like the culture and, and funny and just engaging the community. But I started doing these heartfelt stories and they're, and they said, they don't, you're supposed to be funny. You need to do funny stories. I said, these are good stories that need to be told. And I said, why don't you re give me a new segment? And so they did, they created a, a new segment for me called positive spin with Lucas Mack. And I was able to do incredibly powerful stories, veterans healing, uh, recovery of uh, children, a little boy who didn't have his eyesight, but uh, created a foundation. I mean, just beautiful stories of humanity. However, when I was down there, so my, my wife and I, uh, Jewish, um, Jewish background, and there was all this anti-Semitic graffiti from, uh, there was a retaining wall by our TV station and the retaining wall started like four feet. And by the time it, it cause it, the driveway on the other side of the retaining wall went up a hill. So the retaining wall grew and there was anti-Semitic graffiti probably for 30, 30 feet up to 10 feet tall, all this tor terrible stuff. So I went into the station that day. This was the beginning of my shift. I got in, I worked from one to 10. Um, and I said, we got to cover this. We have to report that there's anti-Semitic graffiti and the news director, assistant news director that was working at the time, the Simon editor said, no, what, why would we do that? And I said, why would we not do that? If it was a gay Hispanic, um, which was my assistant news director, I said, you, if there was anti gay or anti Hispanic graffiti, you would cover it. I know you would. So why are we not covering this? And they chose not to cover it. And I got really angry. And that's when I, my first, like, this is not about telling the truth. This is about specifically sharing information that aligns to just in a local station, which aligns to those two men that night, the assistant news director and the assignment editor. And I think people need to understand this is that everything is crafted for the the audience to consume everything the way i say a word the way i even use the word crafted is intentional to say it is intentionally thought through each word the cadence the timing what audience i bring in who i interview how i make them sound when i cut it off to invoke some reality which isn't reality <laughs> you know um so I just share that with you and share that with others that I've never shared that story on this podcast, but that is the reality of media. There is a specific, I don't even want to use the word bias or agenda because those, I don't even think it's that nefarious. I don't even think it's that intentional. I think it's that when someone in power is presented with a narrative that doesn't align to their personal desire to share with the world they're just not going to share it i think it's sometimes that simple was this uh prior to 9 11 uh this is post it was post okay yeah a lot of the the mainstream news channels um i know you worked in the educated agency so you'll understand this yeah um even the typography they use and the graphic designs uh for the news slides these are all like sensational types of design. You know, there's a designer creating these graphics with like lots of red and, and black and white emergency colors with these right. bold typefaces. Um, the typefaces they use are very, um, are very particular high, high end typefaces that are used in advertising. So these are typefaces that have been seen by the masses millions of times. So when they use these typefaces on the, on the television screen, it goes into the consciousness much easier and much more willing, almost uh, subconsciously. And uh, as a designer, you know, you see other designers using, you know, design elements to to make a certain feeling. Right. And and you are like, dude, this this is not real stuff. This is just they're just trying to make us feel a certain way by using these crazy designs do you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah no i do and the name for the graphic that that flies across the screen is called a stinger that's the news term 
Yes. What we need, what stinger are we going to, I'm like stinger. You're literally every insect that sting usually injects some sort of irritant or, I mean, it cannot, if you really break down what is happening, we are being invaded by a rhetoric entity that is infecting our minds, which then affects our bodies, which then affects our community, which then affects, I mean, and it goes on and on and on. And people are sick and the suicide rates higher than it's ever been. I know, I don't know globally, I don't have the statistics, but I know in the United States, certainly it's higher than it's ever been in recorded history that men comprise 79% of all suicides in the United States. And if you look at this, um, the people that are free, the people like you and I that break out and many, there, there's many, 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 many multitudes of people waking up. But the, the, what we get to wake up to is one of the things we get to wake up to is in the movie, The Matrix. I reference this so many times that people that even Morpheus and Neo and Link and all those characters that wake Neo up, they were still playing the game in the Matrix. They go back into the Matrix, the agent shows up, they run. I mean, that was even within the awakening of the Matrix, they still had this, this component of running. And it took Neo to finally say no, <laughs> which then disrupted the agents. They looked at each other like, what do you mean? No, this isn't the game. What are you talking about? You are awake. You should be running. And he says no. And I, I always get chills. I have chills right now when he puts his hand up and says no, and they shoot at him, the bullets stop right there. That, that scene, in fact, I got chills on my, on my arms right now. That scene <laughs> is what we get to wake up to. And that this whole system is swirling around. It could be as, as visceral as it wants to present. And we just say, no. Just no. No. That, that is what I think. I, I really believe humanity's desire is to say no. But because of trauma, shame, um, personal trauma, abuse, all these things, we have a culture of people pleasers in the United States. And I, I would assume around the world where people just want to, okay, you know, instead of saying no, so we can say yes <laughs> to what we want. You know what I mean, brother? Absolutely. I think a lot of people also have a lifetime ego hold mm. on media, on media and music and, and movies a lot of people's personalities are based on movies they've seen, on songs they listen to. And I, I noticed that a lot of the youth will have slangs and terminology in their language they use from the songs they listen to. Mm. And, you know, it becomes people's livelihood, right. their, their attachment to the media. So mm. it's very hard to just encourage people to, to just turn it off. Yeah, but for for myself, I did that. I I didn't own a television for for over ten years. Mm. Ever since I went to college, actually, I never owned a television. Um, that's been one reason why I was able to awaken so quickly and so soon, and I was able to create the Great Awakening map where everybody else was watching television for the past ten years. So um, that's one reason why I was able to break away from the media, because when I was an art student, we did a lot of critique on mainstream culture. Mm -hmm. So that was one reason why I was able to break away from that type of mind programming. I was able to see past it a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And um, I think uh, everybody had moments in their life when they would be glued to CNN or Fox. Right. And I remember being glued to CNN when I was going through art school. But after graduation is when I started to realize that um, it was fake news media mm. because I saw, I saw how they were re reporting on North Korea at the time and I was really sort of coming out of the 9-11 truth movement right. still, still learning and, and piecing together everything yeah. during these times. And that's when I really was able to break away from the media after learning how they were lying to the public about everything. 
right. not just one thing, it's everything. And then I think that takes a lot of, takes a lot of, uh, takes a toll on people because they've been so attached to it for so long. Right. Um, even my mom and my mom and dad probably still watch some type of television news right. without any kind of clue what's going on right. or, or who their son is or what I've been able to do in the past 10 years regarding um, telling people to, you know, tune out and tune into yourself consciously. Amazing. How? I just have to tell you, I am so thankful we're talking. I really appreciate you being willing to, it's not, it, what time is it where you are? Nine thirty, almost nine 30 at night. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to ask, how did you find my work in the first place? Was it the great awakening map or my Instagram? Um, what came first? I think the map I started, um, I think I found the map first and I had printed that out. I went to your website, um, and printed that out on your, on the free download. And then, um, so if the anybody concept- wants to download the map, it's great awakening map.co. They can follow along, uh, during this interview, but I just wanted to put that out there. Yeah. Well, that's great. And, uh, yes, please. And, um, and I will put the link in the show notes. I'll put your Instagram. Here. I will put everything because people, <laughs> this is, first of all, how long, I have to ask, how long did it take you to design this? I love that question. This, it's a fun question because uh, the truth is I was a researcher. Remember I told you from that moment, I turned on that video of the hexagon on Saturn. Yeah. I sort of consider that like my first step into the rabbit hole. So that was over 10 years ago. So I was a researcher for 10 years, buddy. But I didn't write a book. I didn't have anything to prove the knowledge I had gained over the past 10 years of being a researcher slash artist slash designer. So in mid-2018, I sat down and I said to myself, bro, you are an artist, you're a designer. You haven't done anything to wake up the world. What's wrong with you? You got to do something now. And this is when QAnon started to come onto the scene. And QAnon had done all of this political waking up of people, but they had not yet touched on the, on the secret space program or other really dark rabbit holes that connect to everything. Right. So I said, okay, this is my chance. I need to make the ultimate one page meme that can waken humanity as quickly as possible. And it needs to contain as many red pills and rabbit holes as humanly possible. So over the course of one weekend, I sat down and I, the layout came out. The layout came down. Wow. I, I, I made an intention to channel the... I really need to make this really powerful. Please help me. I need, I need this information to channel through me. Everything that I've ever learned, I, I need it to come out now. So as a designer, you know, it, it came naturally for me to to lay it out using the typography and, and the, the layout that, I, that you see. Um, over the weekend, I got the layout down and then over the course of a week, I sort of finalized it. Um, the information was still coming. It didn't have that many revisions, amazingly. Um, but I realized it on Instagram immediately after that week. And then the rest is history. It, it, it started to slowly grow over the course of uh, six months and then I think I had my Instagram already created by then for over maybe, I would say a year. I had the, the 5D Awakening Consciousness Instagram. So when I started to use the map in conjunction with that account, then it started to pick up faster. My following rate started to, to increase. Wow. And then um, the map sort of started to float around as uh, an important piece of the great awakening yeah and and i kind of wanted it to be this anonymous piece of of art that would help QAnons to really understand the big picture of everything because a lot of QAnons are really stuck in the political but they haven't seen the spiritual or the secret space program or the ultimate big picture view of reality that's been there the entire time and and q alludes to it all the time but um Q is really focused on the political right now because that's yeah. where that's the, we can awaken most of the majority of the Americans. Right. And then 
And then the QAnons who are really brave, they can go a little bit deeper. They can put together a little bit more of the pieces of the puzzle. And if they're lucky enough to find the map, they may be able to go into the map all the way, not even just to the political, but all the way to like spiritual enlightenment, like full yes. light body. Yes. You know, that, yes. that's the dream. You know? it's, they have to awaken to that. That's right. That, I have a, who, the, do you know who, um, do you know who did this? Um, the deep state map. The deep state map is by another artist named Dylan Lewis. And when I created the Great Awakening map, he had already created the, the Q web, is what he named it. Wow. So the Q web prompted me to create the Great Awakening map because his map had touched on the secret space program just a little bit. Yes. And that's my specialty. So I decided to really go deep into the secret space program and show how free, free energy and, and extraterrestrial disclosure was all tied in with the QAnon movement, which it is. <laughs> you know, I, uh, last night, so one of the big um, blessings in my life has been Gaia, the channel which you have in the map. And, um, but I forget what I was watching last a couple of weeks ago, talk about the um, anti-gravitational energy and all that. But the Jetsons, I mean, I watched the Jetsons regularly when I was a kid. And now you can't, no one probably even knows what the Jetsons are. They took that even concept away, which was, you know, that, what were they doing? They weren't burning fossil fuels to move around. And, um, like a free energy future. Free, it's a free, it was free energy. Yeah, exactly. And, um, all this at that very, all this stuff got taken out and, um, Show me question. So let me, where do I even start? You mentioned um, Q. How did you, how did you first find Q? It was just from being on the internet so much as a researcher. Yeah. It's, yeah. it was inevi inevitable, you know, um, I found it maybe the first two weeks Q started to, you know who I heard about it from? It was David Wilcock. Wow. He was getting, he was having conversations with, uh, an, an anonymous person who was linked to to QAnon. That's how I found out about it. Wow. Yeah, it was it was way back in the day before Q the Q uh, the Q drops were even happening. Man, I I am admittedly late to Q. I only found Q during this year, um, and yet all the stuff on your map, <clears throat> I would say. <clears throat> Besides Q, which I just learned about, most of the stuff I've been aware of just through my own readings um, since college myself. So when I was 20, I attempted suicide. And then when I did not die that night, something broke open in my brain where my life changed dramatically. Um, that's not even the right word. Like I would talk about that was like a born again experience, but sadly I never dealt with the trauma before 20. So I carried two decades worth of horrific trauma, tried to pretend it did not exist, push forward. I wanted to know what truth was more than anything else. I knew two things. I knew I loved God. I knew I loved the, I knew I loved the origin of light and the origin of love. And I love truth and I would do anything I mean, I did a podcast earlier um, this year, why I left Christianity to find the love of God. And because I, I, and I got a lot of flack from it. I, a lot of people reached out. Thank you. But I want truth more than anything, more than um, I would rather. I mean, I would not prefer it, but I would rather given the two choices, stay true to myself and stay true to truth and the world hate me versus the world love me and I've compromised truth. That is how much I love the truth. So I've read all these books my whole life. Like I have this book, 50 Years in the Church of Rome by Charles Chinoquy. And he was a um, Catholic priest. I think he was a Jesuit priest who started reading the Bible in the, fifth, in the uh, early 1800s. And read, instead of reading it in Latin and doing the mass in Latin, he started reading it and, and he was a French uh, priest from Quebec and he came down to the Ohio territory and he starts reading the Bible and he has this radical transformation 
and he starts preaching scripture in this Catholic uh, church, and there was a revival that broke out. Well, the Jesuits in Chicago um, came to him and said, stop it. And he said, no. So they brought false charges against him. And a young attorney defends him in the Illinois. Um, it was the Ohio territory at the time, but in the Chicago court, a young attorney named Abraham Lincoln defends and wins the case. And Charles Shinnequi says they will never forget and that was my first, and Charles Shinnequi was his spiritual advisor, Lincoln's entire presidency. He was his personal spiritual advisor. And um, I'm reading books like this. I'm waking up, I'm like, what? What is happening? Like, who, what, what do you mean? And so my awakening has come through the spiritual, religious, things don't make sense, this global rhetoric, and where I've realized that um emissaries roman emissaries just became missionaries uh you know you can change the name but the intent was still the same we are here at a new territory we're coming submit or die and then they changed it to convert or die <laughs> whatever you know it's still the same so it woke me up through that that realm to realize why would i not believe anything why would i not believe everything the king james bible is an interesting uh text in it and it says in um first corinthians it says charity believeth all things it's the only it's the only english version bible that says that term when it says love is kind love is patient love is be. but the king james bible says charity believeth all things and, and charity means a benevolent goodwill and love towards our fellow man. I'm like, I want a benevolent goodwill and love towards you. I want a benevolent goodwill and love towards, it believes all things. And then I started thinking, beliefs are to be explored. Beliefs are not to be concretely, we will never know all truth. We just can go and explore beliefs. And I can sit in this, I can sit with whoever. So, I am just sharing my, my journey, my process of, I'm not afraid to say, yeah, I believe that. Cause why not? Why, how can I say it's not? Because it most likely is <laughs> anyway, brother, I'm talking a lot, but I just sharing like how I came to this whole path. Yeah. I see how you mentioned that you are sort of breaking out of the religious sort of, I mean, that you, that you had as, as a youth. And um, religion is following the messenger, but spirituality is following the message. Yes, brother. Yes. So that's what that's what we're awakening to as a collective consciousness right now. Um, I think a lot of the people who have awakened away from the religious upbringing, they found the spiritual knowledge in terms of consciousness and meditation and, and high vibration and these sorts of things. So it's a really exciting time because spirituality is not what people have always sort of made it out to be. Right. It has a lot more to do with consciousness and manifesting your dreams and finding all sorts of teachings around the world that help you become the true version of yourself, the highest version of yourself. And even if you do have a religious upbringing, you can use that to strengthen your spiritual connection to self, to find. Um, for myself, I am, I'm a yogi now. So I practice uh, a form of meditation called Dzogchen. And Dzogchen is from the Vajrayana school of Buddhism. But um, it's more of a practice in mind awareness. The true nature of the mind is the state of enlightenment. And to tune into that state of mind, um, there's a practice, a meditation practice, where you leave your mind in a non-dual state of awareness. Um, sounds, sounds kind of fancy, but what it really means is that the, the normal state of mind that people are in is called a dualistic state of mind. Mm -hmm. It's constantly seeing objects and judging them as good, 
bad, mm. ugly, pretty, expensive, non expensive. The dualistic mind is constantly judging. When you see somebody, the mind is judging them constantly. Mm. And this is what creates suffering in our life. We go on and on and on throughout our lives without realizing the dualistic mind. And this is how suffering um, takes a hold. And that's how depression slowly seeps into your life. So if you can learn how to see the world from a non-dual state of mind, that means when you are walking through a city, uh, a normal person's mind would judge everything, mm. would judge somebody's fashion, would look at that car and, and, and either want it or, or uh, not want it, you know, craving or aversion to everything constantly. But the non-dual state of mind sees everything in reality as one taste, as supreme evenness. It doesn't latch on to objects anymore. It's, it knows that everything is impermanent and it doesn't need to latch on to objects as permanent things. Mm. So this, this, this awareness is not really considered a meditation. It's more of like a constant awareness that you practice mm. throughout your life. And as a Dzogchen yogi, this is their main practice. And this is also the path that leads somebody to the rainbow body uh, the light body activation. I'm not sure if you ever heard of this term. But the rainbow body is when, um, when a monk or practitioner passes away, their body turns into light. Mm -hmm. Their body is a transfiguration into pure rainbow light. And usually nothing is left behind except nails and hair. Mm -hmm. So the body actually um, dissolves and shrinks down into a tiny figurine, maybe about three inches tall. And the body will stay warm this entire time. This occurs over the course of maybe a week or two. And as the body becomes that tiny, uh, rainbow lights are emitted throughout the room and throughout the village. And sometimes earthquakes will occur. Sometimes pleasant music will be heard throughout the village and the town. It's, there's many miraculous things that occur during, during the, the rainbow body activation of somebody who practices um, this type of meditation throughout their life. Mm, it's, it's very fascinating. Very fascinating. Um, this is also uh, talked about on the top right of the Great Awakening map. Yes, yes. Uh, that, type, that section of the map is very, very profound. It talks about the rainbow body. It talks about supernatural abilities such as telepathy, levitation, um, moving your hand through solid matter. Uh, these are states of attainment that any human being can can have even christians have attained these states of being um, christians have been known to levitate i've read stories about this uh, jesus had a whole slew of miracles he was able to perform yes. so these are these aren't just fairy tales these are things that transcend across religions you know hindus could do this tibetan buddhists can do this christians i've heard of this yes. any other spiritually awakened people it doesn't matter if, if you are religious. It, it only matters if you are spiritually awakened. Yes. Um, because Jesus was an ascended master. Yes. So was, so was Buddha. So was many other people. Right. So this is spirituality. Spirituality is awakening to your awakened nature. Um, Jesus found his awakened nature. He was able to perform miracles. Buddha awakened to his nature. He was able to, to train many other people to become Buddhas who were able to display much much more um, amazing abilities than even the Buddha was performing during his lifetime. Mm. Um, many, many secret yogis and, and lamas and monks have these abilities. And um, in Tibet, these stories are very, very, uh, very common. Mm. But in the West, you know, we kind of um, file them away as fairy tales or, or coincidence or right. woo, woo woo, whatever you want, you know? Right. So, this awakening is, is about returning to this knowledge that each and every person is capable of. Hmm. And if everybody knew this kind of knowledge, there wouldn't be rioting in the streets of our country like, like there is now. People have lost the connection to who they truly are. And if they truly knew they were able to levitate and, and have telepathy and turn themselves into pure light, light beings, hmm. I think a lot of people would, wouldn't even think once about, about rioting or hurting another fellow man. Right. Right. It's, there's so much. Um, and first of all, if anyone listening say, well, if that's true, why haven't I heard of it? And 
I would reference back to earlier in this podcast is simply not reporting on the anti-Semitic graffiti was a simple decision. They're not going to just, they're, they monetize you staying in the system. They don't make any money when you wake up and like, oh, I don't want to watch or I don't own a TV anymore. And that's, that's a loss of income for them. They need more ads about BMWs and Land Rovers. Yes, exactly right. The ultimate whatever. And then you've realized, and <laughs> you know, the funny thing about the Land Rover commercials or any of these SUV commercials, um, they always show like going over terrain or whatever. And I guarantee <laughs> probably a hundred percent of people who buy those are not doing what that commercial is doing. <laughs> oh man. It's, uh, it's all, it's all a construct. It's all a construct. And one of the things that uh, I've, I've done, I've done a lot of work and my mission, I believe on this earth is to help people find the courage to heal because I believe without healing trauma, they cannot be free. And so hurt people, hurt people is the adage and healthy people heal people. Although we can't heal another, we can be the source of the pain stopping within us from passing to another and then being the invitation for another person to take their mask off and heal. And when we create that connection of healing and, and vulnerability, that's where love enters. And then when love enters, it like springs forth from within and out. And then that ripple effect, the butterfly effect is inevitable when we heal. And um, looking at, where we're going because we are in the awakening even though the media and everyone listening even though even though the media does not want to tell you or is not telling you i would refer back to what the polls and literally the pundits said up into the very evening of the election of 2016. they told you something and it did not happen and i know for many many people that was a gut soul blow to you sadly and i'm sorry that was in fact i had uh one of my employees was the producer for jim kramer of mad money and, and i had hired her from from msnbc or cnbc and um and she was bawling her eyes out the day of the inauguration in 2016 and i realized man there is something there's something so much deeper what's happening. And I think people, sadly, we all want to be loved. We all want to be affirmed. We all want to be held. We all want to be told we're doing, we're good and it's going to be okay. We all want someone to embrace us and just without any condition, just say, however you want to be right now, it's safe, you know, and just be, just, you want to cry, cry. You want to laugh, laugh. You want to whatever but we keep getting led as people on this planet down these paths with the allure that what we are wanting is down this path. And when it's not there, it is such a, it is so much trauma and that is, that's trauma. And then what happens if we don't heal trauma, but we're all traumatized as a, as a people on this planet, then it's hard to see outside the trauma on such a mass scale. And I think what's, that's why I'm, I'm, on this mission to see people heal and have the courage to go back in and, and look at it and say, no. And I teach my children, I have three children, eight, six, and four, and we call it P PVT, pitch, volume, tone. Pitch, volume, tone. If I say no, 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 yeah, no, like, no, when you tell them no, like it's, if you have not practiced your PVT, if you have not, articulated the power of your word where someone you literally stop someone right right in their track like, whoa what is happening someone's asserting their pvt what i call the pvt and you i i'm, I'm sorry i'm talking a lot but i just i'm framing up i don't know i just <laughs> you are helping people awaken out of this and this global trauma consensus essentially and it's so powerful. So what, what are some of the other things you've seen as far as just people following you, reaching out to you, um, even in your, in your, your practice as a, med as a yogi, what are you seeing both in the spirit realm and in this physical plane? For your, your life, you've been working in communication. So you 
you really understand the, the importance of conveying a vast amount of information in a short amount of time. Mm. So with our, with our social media that we've been using lately, such as Instagram, uh, primarily I use Instagram because it, it works on the, the notion of the meme. Mm. And the meme is the smallest unit that contains the most information about it, of the subject. So with the Great Awakening Map, it's just one meme, but it conveys decades and decades and decades of research into a multitude of academia and even subject matters that you could never, ever study in the indoctrinated educational universities that we have. So the meme is very powerful. And every day on Instagram, when I release a meme, it has the potential to completely change somebody's life hmm. it has the potential to teach tens and tens of years of knowledge in one second hmm. and that's that's the power of the meme and you have to really really understand your role as a designer because in a great awakening i think the designers and artists are some of the avant-garde front line because yeah. we are in this informational war and we have to convey information as quickly as possible against the deep state apparatus. So what we do every day is we teach information in a way that enters the consciousness as quickly as possible. Mm. Sometimes it lays dormant like a seed and, and later on when they come across other information, it, it, sort, of, it sort of sprouts the seed, it sort of burgeons all of the, the hidden knowledge they've been hiding or, or holding within themselves for so long. Mm. And that's why the map is, is quite powerful because somebody who goes through the map are going to see topics that they recognize and many other topics they may not recognize. Mm. And those are going to re remain dormant in their mind for a amount of time. And when the time is right, that information can, can surface once again and, and allows them to expand their consciousness much, much quicker. And um, when somebody's like, consciousness expands quicker, it expands the entire planet at the same time because we're all linked. Every mind is linked to everybody else. When somebody awakens, when somebody becomes enlightened, the entire world becomes enlightened. This is very powerful. So the map is designed to raise the vibration of anybody who comes across that type of information. Mm. It's supposed to lead them out of darkness and ignorance and into the light of enlightenment as quickly as possible. So not just my map, but other memes that other like workers are releasing every day on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. Um, all the light workers, star seeds, old souls, all you information warriors, you're, you're doing the best job in the world because our planet has not taken the timeline toward World War III that the deep state wanted to. Right. The deep state has been trying for decades and decades to get the mass consciousness to believe that World War III is supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. But because of divine intervention, our planet has totally veered away from that timeline. And now we're destined for a 5D future yes. of peace and free energy and, and full disclosure and ET contact and instantaneous healing, instantaneous travel. Um, the whole earth can be healed overnight with these new technologies that will be released that are based on free energy. There's so many positive things happening for our future. But right now, if you turn on the TV, you're going to see chaos because the old earth is kicking and screaming as it, as it finally loses its final hold on reality. Yes. And the, the rising of consciousness is taking over. But in the meantime, we're going to see both uh, a rising in, in love and, and knowledge at the same time you're going to see the darkness being squeezed out mm. and you're going to see that play out on the world stage and in the ways that it has been for the past year this was a very uh eventful year with a whole bunch of random false flags and yes. and you name it happening across every continent right. so we have to really realize that our consciousness is determining the timeline that we see always stay at peace, always never fear, always 
send out love to other beings, including yourself, this is going to raise the vibration and the consciousness of the planet more than anything else can right now. Yes. Once you, yeah. once you are loving and peaceful within, this is how you change the entire world instantly. Because it's not that you're changing the world like physically once you are peaceful is more of terms of vibration is when you are vibrating at a high frequency, you're actually pulling a timeline to you that has a high vibrational timeline mm. and a high vibrational timeline is full of peace and beauty and miracles and, and love. Yes. And you're actually pulling the timeline to you rather than changing the world physically. So the timeline of peace and love already exists out there. And you're just pulling that to you by matching that vibration of that timeline by being that vibration right now. Mm. So that's why every spiritual master throughout the course of human history, they have always said inner peace leads to world peace. Mm. If you want to see a peaceful world, you have to be peaceful yourself. Right. Every spiritual master has taught this. Every enlightened being has said this. And this is what they mean. Focus on yourself. Focus on being at peace and loving all beings. And this high vibrational consciousness will literally pull a new timeline to you where the world of your dreams, is, it's already out there. You just have to match it. Mm. You just have to match it to you. Like a train that's left at the station or its destination, it's already headed in that direction. You just have to stay on the train. Most people are already headed toward the life of their dreams, but they tend to want to jump off the train because they just get so confused and, and depressed and let down. They just forget who they truly are. And it's, it's very sad to see, but people just need to stay on that train and know they have to know that the good things are coming, not just doubt everything. You have to literally feel and know that knowing is what's going to create the miracles. Yes. that uh, people want to see in their life. Yes. Brother, Manifesting. Secrets that, of manifest. That is um, very similar to um, when Paul writes in Romans 8, 28, he says, and we know all things work together for good to them who love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. And what I always say is, first of all, what do we know? What we know, we don't, we don't worry about. Like, I know I am a man. I, I am a male. I don't think about it because it's a knowing. I know. And when we can, so what we know, we don't worry about. That is a premise that I teach. This is something that I want us all to understand. If you are worried about something, it's because you do not know. So instead of chasing what you don't know, go in and what you, realize what you do know, which is what you are, who you are, why you are, when, where you are, the questions that make up a story. And then you will find that peace. And the knowing, the gnosis, the waking up to oneself is so amazing. I, I remember, um, I don't know, I was watching some show, uh, one of the shows on Gaia, and I'm like, oh, I'm a Gnostic. If I was going to drive my, my belief system, I was like, oh, that's what I am. And finally, I was like, oh, okay, I got it. And reading, um, I just finished a couple months ago, uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Christian myth about Jesus, the leader of the Essenes. Um, and the Dead Sea Scrolls were, the Essenes were the Gnostic sect of Judaism, which, you know, and they were persecuted and they were drove out. And and the guy that published that book was the only agnostic. It was an atheist and he was not charged or uh, reading that book just for anyone listening. There was no charge of anti anything. In it. He was just the only one that brought forth his research on the Dead Sea Scrolls and the other researchers who are Anglicans or Catholics have yet to disclose their research because it does not fit the narrative. But once you start to realize like it, all the narrative is if we're seeking and staying in a narrative, like you said, which is so beautiful. I have not heard it put that way is following the messenger versus following the message. And if we're following messengers, I know many people who would decry uh, cults for being dangerous, but a cult is simply thus saith 
a messenger to a group that has a consensus to agree to follow the messenger. Well, you can, just because cults can seem small or we can visually see them like, oh, this is a cult. This is a, a wild, wild country on Netflix of the Maharishi, the Bhagwan, you know, like, oh, that's what it looks like. No, it could be global. If you simply, it's a consensus of people aligning to a messenger who says, don't and do. And you say, okay, you know. It's, uh, I, think every, I think every religion is like a stepping stone to lead to reach the peak of spiritual enlightenment. Hmm. Sometimes you have to uh, go through several religions until you find the truth of spirituality. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I, I think I, that uh, that's good. That's beautiful. On my map, I have the word gnosis. Yes, and I put that in there because it's. It's this primordial knowledge that we are all sort of innately endowed with. We can tune into it. Mm. And Gnosis transcends so many religions and so many belief systems and, and spiritual philosophies. And uh, even on my map, I have the Book of Enoch, yes. which was a secret book that was removed from the Bible by the Roman Church because it had information about extraterrestrials and um angels that were referred to as uh i guess extraterrestrials watchers they referred to yeah the watchers or yeah 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 so i mean even the great awakening map covers these type of topics because the the gnosis that has been sort of removed from the the mass consciousness and what we have to do is uh put back the pieces of the puzzle and realize the true nature or the true history of uh of, of humanity Hmm. The human civilization has been has had so much information taken away from um, our beingness, yeah. and that is why we are so lost and and so at ends with each other because we have forgotten the truth of where we came from, who we are, and what our true nature is, our true potential, the the abilities that the spiritual masters taught us are abilities that anybody can do. Yes, but just like we started on in this conversation, the media has destroyed the minds right. of everybody. Right. And we've all, we've all watched Hollywood movies growing up and these Hollywood films have mind programmed us to the point where we can't even figure out who we are or what's really true anymore. Right. Brother, this is so fun. I, have a, I know it's getting late for you. I, I, if you don't mind, I have a few more questions. I just would love to... Please go on and on. Uh, I'm here to chat with you, buddy. Thank you. This is this is so beautiful. Um, let's talk about because for for sure, my first understanding. Um, that's why I messaged you. Really, I reached out to you just because I was reading um, the raw material and and the the law of one, and I've read this other a document that someone. Um, gave to me called the hidden hand. I don't know if you've heard of that document and this, this high ranking elite person who is responsible for the earth's uh, spiritual modality discloses like what they're doing to get us to a negative polarity. That is their job because they're benevolent. It, this is a really track with me, everyone listening. And this is really the, this elite person is saying our job is to bring negative polarity on this earth because we love you when and basically the, their benevolence is to make things as negative as possible however if you think from our perspective and our awakening what a glorious and powerful state that we can say in the negative polarity i have awoken when it's not someday when everything's light and people wake up and it's like, well, that wasn't really an awakening. You're kind of late to the game, but those who awaken in this, that, that is so profound. So I started learning about 3d, 4d, 5d, but I was confused and I'm still not necessarily clear. I understand what 5d is, but is 4d service to self and 5d is the service to others or do we progress three, four, five? That can, can you explain that more of like I, 
the 3D, three, third density, fourth density, fifth density? Okay, third density is the reality that humans live in. It's service uh, to self. And as you go towards service to others, you start to have a 4D consciousness. A 4D consciousness is telepathic. Mm. There are beings who live within the inner earth and they are telepathic 4D beings, but they have not yet moved to 5D because they're still working on their inner spirituality. There are some things that they're still missing which haven't, which haven't uh, pushed their civilization into a full 5D society. A 5D civilization is very, very different than what we could ever imagine because everything is instantaneous. Telepathy, even travel is instantaneous. You can go anywhere in the galaxy um, in the snap of your fingers because a 5D being is a light being. They're not a physical being. They don't, they're not made of matter like we are. Mm. They're not made of blood and bones. They're just made of pure light and consciousness. Mm. So ultimately, we want to move toward that dimensional reality. But in the meantime, Earth is moving from 3D to 4D. Mm. There are already humans who are 4D humans because they are already using anti-gravity UFO technology. The people in the secret space program are already sort of in a 4D civilization mm -hmm. because they're using instantaneous travel all the time. They're traveling vast distances in these UFO craft that are powered with free energy. Mm -hmm. And when you have a free energy device, you can dematerialize your craft. You can go through solid matter. You can travel forward and backward in time. Every UFO is able of traveling forward or backward in time. Hmm. But many of them don't do that because um, of the mechanics of time and stuff. Hmm. But uh, the more service to others you go, the higher in your vibration and your density, your consciousness raises. So a 5D being is totally service to others. Hmm. Their mind is at one with the one infinite creator. Hmm. They, they have infinite love. So for a 4D being to make that next step to 5D, it's a big, big step. Mm. A lot of karma has to be released. A lot of past life karma needs to be healed yes. and released for a being and an entire civilization to make that leap. And Earth is actually making that leap right now. We're actually sort of skipping over 4D, moving into 5D. That's mm. the ideal future. Mm. People will argue with you and say, we're only moving into 4D. We can't go to 5D for another million, zillion years or something like that. But the, the truth is that once our collective consciousness manifests a 5D future, we can go there instantaneously. And that's what it says in the law of one. Yes, yes. That's when, right. it was, when it was channeled in the 1980s, the, the sort of zeitgeist of the moment, of the channelings, made it seem like Earth wasn't able to ascend as quickly as we wanted it to. Mm. But that was just the climate of the time, the channelings. Yes. Yes. A channeling takes place during the climate of, of the consciousness at that time. So Ra was, was sort of reading the consciousness of the planet at that time and making these channelings, which became the law of one. Yes. But we can change the message. We can change the, the outcome of where our planet comes because we have a more awareness of the teachings now. And we can use group meditation and mass meditation to, to change the timeline which we have been, we've been yeah. doing, we just need to keep doing it more and more as more people awaken. Yes. Um, this is the whole point of my Instagram. I, I do these mass meditations every so often and, and they, really, they really change the timeline of our planet toward a more positive future. Mm. And um, the more people who awaken, they automatically are already into this type of information. Mm. So once that goes into their consciousness, it automatically pushes the entire planet toward a better timeline. So me and you are having this conversation because we've already brought ourselves vibrationally into the higher timeline. Yes. It's also known as the new earth. The 5D new earth is, is what I like to call it. Um, so we had to keep moving on this timeline with no fear. The fact that we have no fear is creating these peaceful lives for ourselves. Mm. And then when we are at peace, we are able to manifest a peace, a more peaceful world for everybody else. Mm. This is, this is the, the job of the light worker. This is the job of those who are awakened now, who have awakened sooner than the rest of the population. We have been incarnated 
for this time, for this reason. Yes. And with your talents and with my talents, we are having these conversations and, and awakening other minds, new minds and new hearts every yes. day. Yes. Continuing the, the raising of the vibration of this planet. So this is what we do. Um, and this is the, the way for us to manifest that perfect 5D future for humanity with free energy and, and ET contact and all of that good stuff. It's because the ETs are only going to come once we raise our consciousness to a certain point. Yeah. Um, ETs have already started to make contact with smaller groups of people around the world. Yeah. Um, they do it every day, every day. You have more and more UFO sightings every day, more and more ET contact. Sometimes the contact is more telepathic or during the dream state. Yeah. But these contacts are going to keep increasing and increasing as mass contact becomes uh, more, more near. And crop circles and all these, you know, yeah. It's, it's mm -hmm. happening at such a high frequency right now. It's all tied in with the speed that we release free energy to our planet. Mm. So the secret space programs already have this free energy and defectors from the secret space program are known as the secret space program alliance. They're sort of the, the heroes. Uh, they're sort of like the rebel alliance of Star Wars, okay? Right, So right. the rebel alliance is trying to release this free energy for this world right now. But the deep state keeps, you know, kicking them back down. And, and, and it's, a, it's a real war. This is a cosmic war that is inner earth and in outer space. And every time they try to release free energy, the deep state has a, a plan to stop them. Mm -hmm. But this space war has been going on for so long. But QAnon is, is, part, of the, is part of the Earth Alliance. The Earth Alliance is a secret alliance of, of nations who are trying to release free energy. And they're allied with QAnon. But Earth Alliance is also allied with the secret space program. Mm. And the secret space program is giving them the free energy technology. And they are also helping QAnon uh, see into the future by using the looking glass technology. I don't know if you've heard of this. Yep. Yep. This, yep. Is how, uh, this is how Trump is able to make such confident predictions about the future and this is how he's able to talk so confidently against his his opponents because they've been able to view future timelines and they know the course that the nation is headed right. so right now the the white hats are letting the deep state literally destroy themselves in front of in, in front of the whole nation on the media right. and then the, the alliance is just sitting back and watching all the pieces fall together because they already know the outcome. They already know how the game is going to end. They are just using QAnon as a mouthpiece to teach us how the game is being won. Hmm. QAnon has already said the game has already been won. You're just watching it unfold through right, the drop. Right, enjoy the show. Right, exactly. exactly. That's why they keep playing, enjoy the show. Yeah. And they are not lying. These are high, highest ranking level intelligence officers. And they're telling us to enjoy the show because they know for a fact that it's not just them in control. This is a divine mission. Yes. ETs are involved and secret space program heroes with crazy exotic technologies you can't even imagine. Mm. There's technologies that allow you to hear anything you want to hear on the entire planet. Mm. It doesn't matter if you're like at the bottom of the ocean or on the top of the tallest mountain. They have devices that can hear any location. This is why Q always says, hear all, see all. We have it all. They literally have it all. Amazing. The enemy cannot hide. Amazing. The White Hats are in control. The Patriots are in control. Yes. It's literally, it's literally a show that's unfolding before our eyes. And all we have to do is just keep awakening people to this truth. Yes. Yes. So I'm in Seattle and Seattle has um, the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone or Opportunity. I don't know what CHOP stands for, but they changed it from Chaz to CHOP. And, and, and I don't, I wish I did know what the O and the P stood for right now. Opportunity something, I think. But at last weekend, there was a Christian preacher that went there, this white guy. And he got choked out, beat up, and dragged unconsciously out of uh, Chaz. Three days before that happened, 
our neighbor is getting his gutter and roof cleaned. And I see this guy and I say, hey, do you, can you guys, do you have time to do ours after? And they're like, oh, let me check. And I talked to this guy. His name is Matthew. He was such a beautiful soul, a true, what I would say, Christian in the sense of love, like love, love for people, love of God, like a really beautiful soul. And I'm talking to this guy and it was last Saturday, um, as I'm growing as we're, and we're very close to all this stuff here in proximity wise, energy wise. And I felt the, the, the pull of that and pull of that zone pull of the energy it was it was kind of swirling up this guy gets on top of my roof and immediately i mean i have chills again immediately i felt a peace over my home like like i can't i have chills right now him being on top of my house cleaning my gutters allowed my wife and my children we prayed and we blessed everyone we blessed people and chaz we started blessing just blessing and blessing and blessing and blessing and blessing and wherever blessing i have chills right now just blessing these people and this guy gets down afterwards and i i don't know too much about him i didn't know he was a preacher although his card said um it had a christian scripture on it a verse on it so i started talking to this guy he was a veteran and he had this other guy this hawaiian guy big buff the Hawaiian guy with like the rock, the rock type tattoo, you know, the guy's like, this guy's biceps are bigger than my thighs type guy, just big guy. And they had met at Fort Bragg years ago. Neither of them lived in Seattle. They tell me the story of how uh, Matthew was preaching on the street and this other guy, Kai was driving by and they're like, Matthew. And he's like, Kai. And they were, um, Matthew was the chaplain at Fort Bragg and they knew each other from Fort Bragg. Now they're here in Seattle do, cleaning roofs. So I talked to this guy and three days later, I see him getting choked out in Chaz. And I'm like, how it, I brother, if I told you the story of my life, <laughs> these are one, like many of these like bizarre connections, like even how we're talking, like I've spoken to the most wealthy elite in the world. And I have done so many wild things and God is like the divine is like bringing this, like, I don't know what's happening, but I know it's happening. Meaning I don't know what to call it, how to describe it, what it is. But I do know that fear keeps us focused on self, which, which clouds our purest purpose, which is to love and bless and give and, and share and be and know and listen and care and create. And everyone listening to my beautiful brother and I talk right now, all you have to ask yourself is this, where is the fear? When you can identify where your fear is, you get to go into that fear, stand in that fear, look into that fear in your mind, in your, in your emotional body, go into that, look at it, and then realize that the fear is a lie. It is not true. The truth is what you speak into that lie, what you speak into that darkness, what you bring forth from your mouth and your mind, your light, comes out and you eradicate the lie. You eradicate the fear. You eradicate the darkness. But what I learned, brother, is journeying this past weekend. I told you I just journeyed and I had this real, I came to the realization that this is a game. And I've journeyed many times on, on many, but this one specific was, oh, this is a game. And I realized my brother, Matthew, the guy that was on my roof, chose to play that game in that space, in that time, in that moment. And that game produces a result, which, and I'm not saying he did it bad. There's no judgment on it. He actually sparked these two beautiful black women going into Chaz and waking people up because they saw him, uh, what happened to him. So there's always a, a, a beauty to our, the ripple effect. But I think the greatest game is our awakening right now. Like awaken to 
this is a game and we can play it however we want. We can change the rules whenever we want. <laughs> Someone says, oh, you pulled a card. You have to, you have to land on the purple. Say, actually, this card now means to me <laughs> that I avoid purples or whatever. I mean, you, know, you can play Candyland. You can play whatever board game you want to look at it and just have fun in this reality and not feel suppressed by the rules of the deep state of the media of fear of control of your parents of your family structure because that's usually where people get tripped up is the family structure and that's why i think so many people aren't free is because this family structure it supersedes all structures you know oh i can't i want to be free but my parents you know that guilt so uh, anyway, I, I just uh, wanted to share. <laughs> I don't even know where I'm going. I just wanted to share and I love what you're saying. And life is funny. You know, life is funny. I think it's really bizarre that you saw them in Chaz when you're passing through randomly, you said. He was, he cleaned our roof. It was just a random, he cleaned our roof. And then three days later, I see him in Chaz. And, and I'm like, this is so random and wild and, it's just uh there's no coincidences there's no coincidences nothing is of coincidence everything is is like you said connected which i want to uh ask you a few more questions so what can people be doing right now if listening from the the seventh largest audience of this podcast interestingly enough is saudi arabia and there's an awakening even in Saudi Arabia and this podcast, the golden rule revolution. I, the reason I called it that is because I, I believed a while ago that the most revolutionary thing you can do is treat people like people. You treat them like human beings, love them and treat them as the way you want to be treated. That is revolutionary. Sadly, it's a, it's a more an indictment against our current society, societal state, but it's also the greatest opportunity. You want to be a revolutionary you want to change the world. You want to be radical, love people. You will be the most radical revolutionary <laughs> that the system has seen. Love people. So from your, from your perspective, brother, what can people do right now in this, in the now moment to, to find themselves, to find their awakening? Brother, you are already doing it earlier. You were, you were blessing the guys on the roof, blessing the city, blessing everything mm. you were just like spread fire blessing everything yes. in your whole life and that is the non-dual state of mind the non-dual state of mind is a mind of compassionate wisdom mm. compassionate wisdom is the mind of enlightenment mm. and the more that we are in that state of mind the more miracles happen mm. so the best thing we can do is bless everything every moment of our life always be thankful have the vibration of gratitude within your consciousness at all times gratitude is also blessful um when you are blessing everybody you are saying thank you to them gratitude is one of the highest vibrations in the universe constantly stay in this state of vibration um how you can do this is throughout your day always be think thinking in your mind, thank you that I have this home. Thank you that I'm mm. saying, thank you that I had food today. Thank you that I'm healthy. Thank you that I'm alive. Mm. The more that you keep thinking uh, gratitude for little things, this is how you snowball into the bigger miracles, the more profound life-changing mm. um, dream manifesting type of uh, activity that you want to see in your life. Mm. We all have dreams and goals. And sometimes that dream is, something sort of like traveling you know traveling is very very popular everybody wants to travel but they think they don't have money or they have a job they're, they're just tied down but if you want to manifest traveling you have to think about how happy you'd be if you got on a plane tomorrow mm. and you have to feel that feeling of, of, of happiness now as if it already occurred you have to feel as happy as you were as if you were in another country right now traveling mm. when you match that vibration the the universe is going to pull that timeline to you mm. so if you want to have a healthy body you have to constantly be thanking the universe that you already have a healthy body mm. and you have to feel happy and 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 feel healthy as if you were already 
living that dream. And then the universe will see your vibration and just match another timeline to you mm-hmm. where that has already or that has already occurred. All your dreams already exist. And also another timeline exists where none of your dreams come true. Mm-hmm. If you want that, if you want that timeline to happen, just be depressed and hate everybody. Yeah. You're definitely are gonna reach that timeline. <laughs> right. And if you want if you want the dream timeline, be constantly joyful, loving, blessing everything and thankful for everything at all times. Mm. Don't don't for once try to fall into fear or or blame or judgmental or even gossip. Those are very low vibrational activities. Always stay as positive as you can and you're going to be on that timeline of your dreams. Mm. You're going to be on a timeline that's so much better than what your ego mind could have ever dreamt up. The universe has something much more profound for you that you could have ever dreamt up with your ego mind. So, if you just stop trying to like dream about the mansion or dream about the dream job or dream about the 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 you know whatever kind of car exotic car you want yes. but instead dream dream for a future where you are constantly happy and healthy and everything is provided mm. the universe is much more willing to pull that timeline to you than if you specifically try to manifest a very um nuanced type of future so some people want to have like a wife and a certain num- number of kids and they want to live on this island with this white house, et cetera. This is more difficult for the universe to manifest for you because it's very specific. Mm. But if you manifest being grateful at all times, this is the most powerful state that you could ever want to be in because that means you already have everything. Think about that. So it's better to manifest sort of like just just being in the state of gratitude is going to manifest that most ideal future for you. Mm-hmm. The ideal future that you couldn't even imagine. It's much better than you could imagine now. That's what I'm trying to say. There's many ways to manifest, but the most ultimate way to manifest is just to be thankful at all times for everything that happens to you. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to have the universe provide everything for you that you never ever thought would even be possible. Like for me to live... In, um, I'm traveling right now in Thailand, but I, I finally was able to move away from Los Angeles from my, from my freelance job. And now all I do is study Dzogchen and meditate, and I live basically as a wandering yogi. And it's never been exactly what I pictured for my future, but I always wanted to manifest something where I could travel and be happy and not worry about money. And this is where the universe has taken me now, which is much better than what I could have ever imagined. You know, um, and the impact it's, it's, you've made is, I'm sure, further than you. That's just, not even. It's not even was even in my book. The right, type of right. I'm doing with my Instagram. The Great Awakening map wasn't even something I manifested. It was just that I wanted to manifest helping the world, and the map and Instagram was just part of it. So the universe is going to throw in these bonuses that are just way more amazing that you could have imagined. That's why I'm taking care of my Instagram and the Great Awakening map um, during my meditation retreat. It's, mm-hmm. it's the only sort of work job that I do, but it's not considered a job to me. It's just my, it's my joy. So beautiful, brother. So, so to, for me to get here, all I did was manifest gratitude. I didn't ask the universe for a specific amount of income per year or something crazy like that. You know, right. I just manifested gratitude. And then two years later, everything is just like, perfect if, if you can even imagine Amazing. that word being true because when you are a yogi um and you're practicing the non-dual state of mind uh living a perfect life is not something that's a, a utopian right because you start to realize that perfection is just a dualistic term hmm. it's just a it's just another term it's just another label another judgment so once you can get over the fact of, of judging what's perfect and what's not and what's ideal and what isn't, then you got to start to be living the non-dual state of mind where everything is just always perfect, quote unquote, perfect. Yeah. So I, I, I encourage all of your audience to pick up um, a meditation technique. Um, you don't have to pick Dzogchen. You don't have to go non-dual, but you can start off with other many, many other forms of meditation. Just focus on what brings you joy at that moment. And later on in, in your life, your meditation technique will change. 
you'll find something better or something more fun or something more easier, something more profound. It's going to find you at the right time when your vibration matches. Uh, a lot of people start with yoga. Mm. I think a lot of people first awaken with yoga and, and how it expands their consciousness and their chakras and all that sort of stuff. Yes. And then later on, they start to uh, pick up meditation of more of the mind, uh, mind changing instead of more physical changing of the body. Yeah. Uh, consciousness is important. I, I would suggest meditation over anything else, but uh, everybody has their, um, you know, <laughs> has their own goals at the time of their spiritual awakening. Right, right. It's so beautiful, brother. It's so beautiful. I'm so glad. I'm so thankful for that we're able to talk. And, and uh, I hope this is one of many. And just thank you. Seriously, thank you, brother. Thank you for thank you so much. doing what you're doing and speaking and sharing. And it's seen, it's impactful, it's incredible. And it's just the beginning. This is just the beginning. You're just you're just scratching the surface. You know, this is this is um, so beautiful. And and you know, there's too much. Everyone listening, there's too much. I mean, every single thing on the on the Great Awakening map is a podcast subject of its own. In probably many 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 episodes. Um, so we, you know touched on a few enjoy it play with it just as a diamond reflects light in every move you can turn it upside down look at it different angles like start looking at yourself looking at this world looking at life from all facets and let the light the light come through and look at it differently it's okay to look at things from all perspectives spherically inside and out upside and down and play with it because this is a game and and we we've forgotten to have fun we've forgotten to to be grateful we've forgotten that there are so many that are in need of what we have to give our blessing for another is the blessing that they're seeking uh, their manifesting is actually our blessing them. We, we, the smile that we give to someone, the eye contact we look at someone in the eye, the, the, the stillness that we bring to another soul, all these things are the blessing and the gift and the joy of being in this reality right now. So keep going, brothers and sisters. And my brother, thank you so much. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you so much as well. I just wanted to say that uh, we were talking about the game as you were closing. And I just wanted to say that uh, to win the game, you have to not take things so seriously. And think about that when you played video games when you're younger, the more serious you took it, the more you would lose and, and die. Mm. But if you realized it was a game and you had fun, that's the whole point of it. It's the, it's the game. Mm. Don't take things so seriously. A lot of spiritual masters also said that enlightenment is not taking things so serious. Hmm. That's another really powerful thing I learned uh, over the years. So I just wanted to close with that. I had another thing to say, but I, I think it had to do with the map. But we didn't even touch on like <laughs> the deepest parts of the map yet. <laughs> I, know, we didn't. I mean, um, you you tell me i mean there's so there's so much when like um oh i remember now yeah it was the crystal you were talking about the crystal yes and yes yes the the crystal is one of the most powerful symbols of Dzogchen meditation mm. um the crystal is able to become any of the colors behind it but the crystal forever stays unmoved mm. So just like us right now in the, in the game, we, we can absorb everything around us as we take in new information, but we should always rename, remain equanimous, just like the crystal. The crystal is constantly equanimous, no matter where it is. Hmm. Whenever you put the crystal over something else, it, it becomes that color behind it, becomes hmm. that light behind it. But it's never 
it's never really, really affected. That's how we should always be. We should always remain equanimous within all the information that we, we take in. Mm. Don't, don't become polarized. Try not to choose sides or pick sides. Just observe everything yes. with equanimity. Yes. And that's the greatest way to stay in the non-dual state of mind during these times. Mm. Yeah, that's beautiful. Well, I think then the the only solution is we'll do another episode, some some hopefully soon, and let's let's get in, let's go, let's go deep. Um, and I'm down. Thanks. That, that would be amazing. Thanks so much. Yeah. I'm and so how down. can people financially support you? Oh, thank you so much. Um, I actually receive donations. So if um, if anybody wants to make a purchase from my my shop. I sell posters and t-shirts of uh, 5D gifts. Um, the Great Awakening map can also be purchased as a professional museum quality poster mm. um, at great, greatawakeningmap.co. But if people would like to leave a donation, they're more than welcome to. Uh, just go to my website and you'll see the donation link. So anything helps to continue my work and my mission and to uh, continue my lifestyle as a wandering yogi. So this is, uh, this is the life path right now. And every single person who has ever contributed has helped me so much to uh, continue this work for, for humanity. It's, it's truly amazing how many people reach out to me every day. So I'm really, really grateful. Thank you, everybody. Blessings, brother. Blessings. Brothers and sisters, this opportunity that you find yourself in right now, it is not by accident that you listen to this episode. It is not by accident that you have been searching for something greater than your experience right now. It is not by accident that you know there is a yearning deep inside of you, a yearning to be free, a calling to experience more love, more light, more joy, more gratitude, a higher frequency, the greatest vibration you get to experience this and it starts with questioning questioning the very existence starting with why why are things the way they are why do they say the things they say why is the world what the world is and then the other questions who what when where why who is saying it who am i who am i meant to be who do i want to be who are these people talking who are they that speak on the media as authoritarian voices? Who are they? When? When did they learn this? When did I learn what I learned? When? When is all things? When are things? When will things? When? Where? Why? And what? 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 What is happening? Who, what, when, where, why? The five questions to make a story. Five being the number of life. Discover this, my brothers and sisters. Start questioning. Welcome to the Great Awakening. Welcome to the universal law of love and light. Welcome. I want to welcome you. I'm going to start doing more episodes like this. This is where my real heart's calling is. My heart's desire is that you wake up to the infinite love and light that is available to you. To my religious friends, those stuck in the dogma of religion, I invite you to listen. I invite you to keenly listen. And what resonates with you, great. What doesn't re resonate with you, great. But all things work together for your good. So all information is neutral and you get to explore. My brothers and sisters, welcome. My name is Lucas Mack. This is the Golden Rule Revolution. The golden rule meaning to treat people like people, to do unto others as you would have them do unto yourself, to treat them the way you would want to be treated. And the way you want to be treated is the way you get to treat yourself, which is to receive love that you may give love to others. This is what your awakening is. To receive the love and light that is available. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And my brother, thank you for joining me. We were going to have many, many more conversations like this. Blessings, everyone. I will talk to you on the next episode.